I'm Kieran and welcome to my channel. In the previous video I built this tool wall, added these magnetic strips and the tool cabinet. There's only one final thing remaining to do, that is to add a drill and driver station at the bottom and also a little tool holder here on the right side. I'll be building two different boxes essentially. One is to hold the drill and drivers and other is to hold small tools like random orbit sanders. Since these two will be relatively small, I'm hoping that I can use only the scrap fiber that I have remaining around the shop. I quickly rip the plywood sheets and then bring out my crosscut sled for crosscutting some of the pieces. I love my crosscut sled. I built this based on the video that Nick Ferry made. Uh, this has all the bells and whistles. I'll leave a link to Nick's video. He explains the process in great detail. I square up one end and then I put the stop lock in and batch out the rest of the parts. I'll cut the pieces for drill and driver charging station. I'm going to glue them and put some 18 gauge nails on them uh, for temporary holding and then drill and screw in the drywall screws. I sped this part up because this process is very repetitive but I still wanted to make sure that I capture the process. Just a little close-up of the process, I glue both sides. And then spread the glue with the silicone glue brush. And put a nail from the bottom. That will temporarily hold it. Flip the piece, add a couple of more nails, and then come back with the drill and driver to secure it firmly. I also cut some scrap pieces for the drill holding station. Then I mark the slot for individual dividers. There'll be five dividers, so it, it can hold up to five tools. I use uh, the technique uh, that people use for framing out the walls with two by four. I mark a line where the board should align and then mark an X next to it to see which side of the line should the board align. Here's a close-up of that. I need to add these additional markings and lines and things like that because otherwise I totally mess it up.
To build the holding pieces, I take the whole assembly over to the table saw and set the width on the incrementer gauge with the piece as a reference. These little pieces are what will form finger-like joint to hold the tools eventually. After that, align these pieces onto the dividers and glue, nail and screw them. The end pieces are a little tricky because they don't need to protrude on the other end so I set them, mark them and cut them individually on the table saw. I wipe out the excess glue, squeeze out, so you see the channels and that's where the tool sits. This is where I'm trying out to see if my drills and drivers fit and they fit. I mark and cut some pieces as decorative molding on the top. Uh, these are more decorative than structural. so. That's a nice look. So this is what happened. Uh, this little piece split. I was uh, trying to rush through this because I couldn't find two inch long nail in my 18 gauge nailer and I didn't feel like uh, starting up my compressor. So I just tried to use the glue and screw, uh, but didn't realize where I was drilling. Uh, it's not a big deal because this is mostly decorative and it, it doesn't really add to any strength of the piece. So far I've only used up all the scrap pieces that I've had lying around uh, for this project. So I just want to make sure that I do the same thing for the French cleat system. So I had some off-cuts plywood lying around so I'm going to make sure that I use this optimally to create two 48 inch section split at 24 inches uh, on the wall there. So I'm going to mark off the cut lines and then get to cutting. I set the blade at 45 degrees to cut the French pleats. It's the same piece that split into two pieces that forms the joint. After the cleats are cut, I mark the locations where they should be drilled on the holder as well as on the tool wall. Once that's done, I take the first cleat, temporarily hold it with the clamps, check the level, and drill and drive in some screws to secure it. I captured a close-up view of how the cleats go together. There are two pieces cut at 45 degrees to each other. So they form a very tight joint to secure something on the wall or any sort of vertical surface. I also secure the second cleat in the same manner as the first one. The wall cleats are 48 inches long whereas on the holders they are 24 inches long because there are two holders. 
I want to be able to take them out or mount them individually. Here's the moment of truth. And it fits perfectly. The second holder also fits perfectly. With that part of the way, I call this project done. As you can see, uh, my drills and drivers are hanging in their own spots. There's one extra spot open in case I decide to add another tool in the future. Uh, the charger is at the top. It's charging the battery right now. And on this side, I've thrown in uh, two of my random orbit sanders. So this is the whole view. I'll do a full organization later and add some beauty shots. Thank you for watching.